Welcome back, I'm Daniel Shensmith, the Barrister of England and Wales, and yes, there is a bit of politics in this video, but it does come along with a bit of a personal story, because I do understand the frustrations that a lot of people might have in this particular case. So let's get to it. So I came across a tweet this morning from Rupert Lowe. Uh, this was a tweet about how much money this country may be giving away to foreign nationals. And I say may because Rupert has invited DWP to confirm or deny that the statistics are accurate, if indeed they collect such statistics. Rupert believes he's found a way of identifying what this amount of money is, and we'll come back to that in just a moment. But one of the amounts of money that is given out, potentially at least, is in the form of universal credit, among others. For those that don't know what it is, or for my international viewers, universal credit is an amount of money that is paid by the government in monthly or uh, twice a month instalments uh, to assist with living costs. It depends on whether you're in, in work, how much you work, or if you're on a low income or if you're out of work, whether you've got children, whether you're single, whether you're living together and all those kind of things. And what you get is quite staggering. So what you get is an amount of money ranging between 300 and something, 600 and something pounds. And then when that's added with other things, I understand that people get um, something in the region of eight, 900 or even more per month. Um, I know lots of people that have got a significant amount of money like this. Now, the problem with this is as follows. Public funds. Um, if you have permission to enter or stay in the UK, it may include a no recourse to public funds condition. And this is where my bit of a personal story comes in, because many of you know that my wife is Chinese. And so we had to go through the whole rigmarole of getting the spouse visa and so on. Lots and lots of hoops to jump through, life in the UK test, proving that we were in a relationship for several years, turning up with a folder full of documents, proving that we'd had phone calls, and over a certain amount of time to prove that it was a real relationship, et cetera, et cetera, before they would allow um, the visa and then before they would eventually allow indefinite leave to remain. However, as this says here, many of these things come with a no recourse to public funds condition. And many of these different types of visas will have this no recourse to public funds. And of course, those who do not have permission to be in the UK and require it will also have no recourse to public funds. Now, there are exceptions for some benefits, etc., um, but we move on to where this problem might arise. Now, if we look at this page here, uh, this is from Shelter. Uh, this says you can usually get benefits in the UK if you are a British or Irish citizen, EU settled status, indefinite leave to remain, or refugee status or humanitarian protection, etc. So I guess that what we're really going to get at here is the amount of uh, new grants to those with refugee or humanitarian status protection. Um, but then when we move on here as well, this confirms that asylum support can be given with housing and money to support you and your family whilst you're waiting to find out if you'll be granted refugee status. And as soon as you're granted refugee status, you should apply for benefits, get a bank account and arrange your housing. And so that's when we come back to the statistics from Rupert Lowe, because he says that despite the establishment's best efforts to hide the statistics on the nationality of those claiming benefits, I believe that I've uncovered the true answer, he says. The Universal Credit Habitual Residence Test is used to determine a foreign national's eligibility for accessing benefits. It also includes British citizens who have returned uh, from abroad to check the factual habitual residency in the UK. And I've been reliably informed, Rupert says, that uh, by a central DWP whistleblower that these numbers of British citizens equal, equal roughly 10% of the overall tests passed. So in other words, they take this habitual residency test to determine their status for universal credit and whether they are eligible for accessing benefits. And if so, um, roughly 10% of those are Britons returning from overseas and the remainder presumably are foreign nationals. So that's the, the crux of this tweet. Then we get to the statistics. So minus the British numbers, the numbers are 3.3 million. And so April 19 to March 2020, 342,000, um, then 826,000, etc., all totaling 3.3 million. This means, Rupert says, that over 50,000 foreign nationals are passing these tests to become eligible to access and receive universal credit every single month. 
If this is wrong, Rupert says, the DWP should come out and publish the full nationality breakdown of those claiming benefits. This is a scandal. The British public deserve to know the full truth. Now, none of this, of course, is to say that any of this is wrong at all. However, the British public, I agree with Rupert here, deserve to know the full truth. If it is public money being spent on foreign nationals, the very least that the British public deserve is the full breakdown and statistics of all of that money that is being spent. Now, when you consider that so many people have indeed been applying for visas, whether that's a student visa, a spouse visa, and then ultimately um, indefinitely to remain, going through all of this process, which is incredibly difficult. I mean, part of the process in incorporates an interview, or you can do it by post. And then the timings, I think, are deliberately difficult because your visa might run out and you need to apply for an interview, but the interview takes so many weeks, but you can't apply before so many weeks before the end of your visa. And then you're on a very tight window if you apply by post. And if it doesn't get dealt with in that time, then you have to request your passport back and leave the country. Otherwise, you are overstaying and then good luck trying to get your visa next time. But if you do it by phone, then you've got a much sooner and much better chance of getting it sorted. But we, and I speak from experience here, we had, I think, five or six of us trying to ring on the day that was the only day available to ring to get an appointment for the day that we needed to have the appointment. And it was two or three day window, I think. And we had to try each day to get that appointment. And we tried on the dot at nine o'clock when the office opened, five or six of us all ringing the same number, trying to get through, and only one of us got through. The rest rang and rang or cut off and then just kicked us out. One of them got through, we got on the phone, we got the interview and we got through and we sorted it all out. So this is just how difficult it is for those that are actually following the rules. And so when you look at statistics like this with 50,000 foreign nationals passing these tests every single month, one does have the right really to question the data and the statistics and how these are being decided by whom and on what basis. All of which, of course, at a time when the government is telling us that there is no money for pensioners, that they've got to put up employer national insurance, they've got to cut all sorts of other things. And ultimately, it feels like this latest budget is decimating the economy. Now, the reason that I find this absolutely staggering and newsworthy is that if it is true that over 50,000 people per month are being granted eligibility for universal credit, even on the basic level of £311, that is an additional and cumulative £15 million per month that is being, being paid out to foreign nationals on a basis that we don't know, don't understand, and statistics that ostensibly have not been made public, certainly not with any deliberate action. And if you take that up to the um, single and over 25 category, that's £393 per month, and that is just shy of £20 million. Again, additive and cumulative every single month, just shy of £20 million being paid out to foreign nationals. Now, there are legal routes to immigration and there are ways of claiming asylum when you are here. Now, I'm not saying for one moment that there are not genuine asylum seekers here, but as a country, I think this is in the country's best interest to know exactly where this money is being spent and that these statistics should be published. Because how else are people going to understand how their money is being spent and for whom they should vote in the next election? So I hope you found that useful. So if you do, please do hit the like button and subscribe. I think this is newsworthy information that everybody should know. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Let me know if you've had a story similar to my own, our own story which I know we're not alone. I know a lot of people have struggled with this. I know a lot of people have had difficulty with it. I've had clients come to me and I've tried to take my clients through the same process because they've struggled as well. It is an incredibly difficult journey to do this properly and do it properly, we must. And so that's why I can understand a lot of people might be frustrated when they are not given the full statistics and the full picture. But as I say, if you like this fresh type of content, I am not the mainstream media. Do give me a subscribe and I'll see you next time.